Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn SQL course. This is part two. So we are going to jump and roll. Let's go. If you haven't seen the last video, which was the first video, I go over why SQL is important and how it can be helpful. So go check that out. Some things I didn't mention is, you know, even Instagram, all how all the posts and pictures come up, that's SQL. All uh, Facebook, how all posts come up and how they look and everything that's like SQL as well. Okay, so there's PHP, and then they're using SQL to kind of sort everything the right way. So I just want to give you guys some more ideas um, of where you'll see it in your daily life blog posts, websites. Yeah, so keep that in mind. All right, cool. So find the movie with the row ID of six. So basically, what we need to do is find the title of the movie with the row ID of six. So the Incredibles should be the only thing we see, nothing else. Okay, how do we do that? Well, they have some notes here for us, and they're talk about operators, and they say equal sign and blah, blah. Coal name does not equal four. This sign means does not equal. If you took my Python course, you already know that. Okay, so maybe we can say select everything from movies, but we don't wanna select everything. We just want titles. So let's start off with that. Select title from movies. And now we get into conditionals. Conditionals start with okay, uh, where, okay, W-H-E-R-E, -E. there you go. Queries with constraints, okay, so uh, constraints. So here is that, where, okay. Select title from movies. And generally I like to break each of these up into different ones, where ID, is equal to six. Um, how do I remember this? We'll check it out. Select star from movies, right? Remember, ID is six. So I can identify this title by the ID or by the bird or the director or the year or the length minutes. However, if I pick length minutes, what if some other movie is also 116 minutes? So maybe you'll see The Incredibles in some other movie. What if Brad Bird directed multiple movies, which he did, Rat, Ratatouille and The Incredibles. So if I filtered on director, then maybe I would get The Incredibles and Ratatouille. And same thing with year. The most unique thing I see here is ID, and that's 99.999999% of the times gonna be the most unique thing. Um, when you are on Twitter and you create an account, what they generally do is they don't make your username unique or make it an ID. They make your ID an ID and then you SQL that way because um, I'm not sure if you can change. Yeah, you can change your username on Twitter, right? So that wouldn't be unique enough because the hundred hearts you got on your tweet and if you change your name to somebody else now, you can have somebody else's hearts. Um, I'm maybe wrong on the unique name part on Twitter because I'm thinking about it now and the tweet at sign like lets you kind of have a unique name but I do remember that I used to have some other name and now I have Clever Kazi so I got, I got to change mine, okay? Um, so on the back end, their u most unique thing is not being by username, they have something called ID and their IDs might not look like one or two, it might look like seven, six, capital A, small c, asterisk, like some crazy big thing. But that's the unique identifier of Clever Kazi, all of Clever Kazi's posts, okay? So it might actually literally be a table. It might be Clever Kazi's uh, posts, and it might have one column, like, you know, have like a lot of my posts. Then it'll say something else, like likes or whatever, and that's how it goes, okay? So here, the most unique thing is the column of ID. So what I'm gonna do is select um, title and see if you can do it with me because we just did it. What's the next part? From movies. What's the next part? I got to get specific. So we talk about where, get into conditionals. ID is equal to six. Boom, incredible, done. Um, now they want us to move to the second part, but notice we can't really see anything in the table. So what I like to do is go back. How do we revert back and see everything? Keyword, everything, select. How do you say everything? 
asterisk or star from movies. And the case sensitivity doesn't matter. You could say it like however you want. Okay, so now we see everything. You can also just hit reset here. That's a good way to do it as well. Uh, but don't get used to that because I want you to get used to writing it yourself so you understand how it's working every time. Find the movies released between year 2000 2010. Okay, how do we do that? Select the column we're talking about is movies or title from movies where the years are between 2000 and 2010. So if I just reset this, we're, we're gonna be, this is the title we want to show, or this is the column we want to show. So in select, we're gonna have this column, the title name at the end of the day. We're selecting it from the movie table. So that part is also correct. And the part that we want to filter it by is the year column. So when we write where, we're going to talk about year in there. And we want to look between 2000 and 2010. Programmatically, we can do something like 2000, um, you know, like year less than 2000 and year greater than, or sorry, the other way, greater than or equal to 2000 and year uh, less than 2010. And this little guy is going to give you sandwiched between the year 2000 and the year between 2010. But SQL allows you to do this in a much cleaner way, which is just saying, um, I think we're year between 2000. Let me go look at their thing really quickly between one and five and blah, blah, blah. Yep. So I was going to write it correctly between 2000 and 2010. And the last part is where. Okay, so we're year between 2000 and 2010. So we completed the second task. Beautiful. Okay, so it's it gave us all those movies. And if you see the years, Monsters Inc. 2001, Toy Story 3, 2010, 2009, 2008, 2007, 6, and it's giving you nothing else. That's exactly what you wanted, right? One thing I'm thinking about making is for everybody who's on cleverprogrammer.com, I wanna create an app where I give you guys points for being on cleverprogrammer.com more. So maybe I'm gonna have a leaderboard and based on your guys' web sessions that you guys have on my website, I'm gonna query it and then, or query it, sorry, just, I, I swear I speak English. And then the top most active person is gonna be at the top, the least active is gonna be at the bottom. And maybe based on that, I'll send out an email or be like, hey, you're the first person, so I'm gonna give you a free coaching lesson. Or maybe I'll just get on a call with you and talk to you and just ask you, what were the coolest things you think are at Clever Program or how could we improve them? So I'm, I'm also giving you some ideas on fun, how you could use it for fun things like an app, but then it's also business related because it's helping me identify and talk to people who are actually the most active. So I'll get back really good feedback so then I can make my courses the best, okay? All right, um, find movies not released in the year between 2000 and 2010. Okay, uh, for those of you guys who have taken my Python programming courses, you'll know that you just have to say something like not somewhere. So that's really it. We're not year between 2010. I'm not really get, gonna get too much into conditionals, but seriously guys, if you're jumping into SQL right away, yeah, that's okay. But if you really wanna learn things the right way, I, I know you're short on time, but trust me, half-ass learning things will end up taking you three times the time it would take you to just learn the things in the right order, okay? So I'm saving you time. Even if you're at work and you're doing a job and you need it, okay? Learn a little bit of Python, at least get up to the if conditions, which should take you less than a few hours, to be honest, and then jump here. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of conditional stuff going on here, okay? So why are you using and instead of or? What logical, specific logical meaning that has? You need to understand how that works, okay? Like deeply understand it. And then 
how this whole thing you just negate it by putting a not. Okay, so these are just some examples, but instead of just Googling and memorizing, understand them, and then you'll have a framework to apply to any situation. Okay, four, how do you think we're gonna do that? Find the first five Pixar movies and their release year. Before I do it, or I brainstorm a way uh, to come up with a solution, every time I'm about to do a task, do it before me. Pause, pause this video, do it right now, okay? Once you fail miserably, if you don't, brilliant, keep moving. Uh, but if you fail spectacularly, that's fine. That's fine. I want your brains to hurt a little bit because that's the only way they expand and become better. So if you fail, please don't worry. Um, and I'm right here. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna walk you through it. But if you can try to do it yourself, that's the best way to start learning. Okay, be active about it. So now I'm gonna start going ahead and taking a sh shot at it from scratch. First thing I wanna do is see everything, select star for movies. Just that's automatic at this point. Okay, so now I'm looking at this data and how do I pick the first five movies and their release here? So, all right, first five movies. I mean, based on what I'm looking at, Finding Nemo, Monsters, Toy Story 2, Bugs Life, to, uh, and this Toy Story, looks like the first five movies. Even if you look at the years, they look like the first five movies. So one filter that makes sense to me is, see if you can figure out what that would be, but a year less than 2004, I think those are the first five movies, right? So that's the pattern I'm gonna think about. So 2003, 21, 19, 99, 1999, those are the first five movies. So, okay, where and First five Pixar movies, so the column we want is actually the title name. Where am I gonna put that? In here or in here? I'm gonna put that in select, okay? And the where part is the condition, and since I'm using year, that's gonna go in the where part, okay? So where part is the filter. So I'm gonna say where year is less than 2004, okay? And, the continue button is unlocked and we have defeated, we have mastered this challenge. Awesome, okay? I'm super excited because as we keep going through this, you guys are gonna see the amazing, beautiful and powerful things it allows you to do. And I can't wait to get to the part where we start building our Python app where you're actually using SQL throughout it, okay? Um, it's gonna be exciting stuff, guys. So, without further ado, Let's jump into the next video and I can't wait to see you there.